usable. And what do I mean by a platform mindset? This gets used a lot. Um, it's a couple different things. It's one at, at the fundamental level. It is about um, thinking how you are going to be data oriented and make data at the forefront of your learning, which means you need to not have technology stacks that are siloed because um, you will lose advantage. Um, if anyone, how many have been in a situation in which something has grown up organically and now they're trying to stitch together a whole bunch of different pieces and you can't move very fast and so you have to pause and then you have to invest and it's, it's worth the investment. But um, you, your competitors sometimes can come in right out from under you because they've built it with a platform mindset um, from the get-go. The second or the third thing is you have to organize. So Conway's law, you will, if you have teams who are not set up to um, manage their destiny and, and you have that platform mindset in place, so they have the framework with which to operate, but then they can operate and go quickly, you will have full stacks and you'll have those silos built. So you have to just think about organization. Um, and that's kind of what I mean by a platform approach. And um, there is a process though that is involved um, that's connected these things. And so the way I like to think about this is first you're listening. So you're, you're thinking about who your, your customers are. And if you're doing that, then you're listening to your customers and you're thinking about what do you need to know about what they're doing. So it's not just about research and surveys, but it's also about what are they doing on your site. And if you don't have visibility into that, then it makes it very, very difficult to understand um, where you need, where you're causing pain and friction and how much it's costing you. And so you're kind of flying blind. We were talking about this earlier, um, and you're going to hear from Mixed Panel a little bit later, but uh, we have cu customer segments that is hard to A-B test. Um, using a, a shopping A-B testing methodology. So how can we at least get insights in, into like what they're doing and, and have a proxy for that? Um, so you have to be thinking about how are you gonna listen and get signal? And then how are you going to absorb the data um, and use it? And, and data and customer um, delight do go hand in hand. Um, data doesn't tell the whole story. So you have to verify, you have to verify with with research, with surveys, with user lab studies, if you can. Um, there's inexpensive ways of doing this. And then it's all about you've listened, you've um, experimented, you're looking at the data, you're experimenting again, and you're listening again, and you're repeating that cycle as fast as you possibly can. Um, and that listening can afford you insights into which you can um, identify new opportunities, whether it's product, service, or making something better. And so that's kind of what I mean about like having that platform mindset and being data centered around that. And there's a really good example. How many have read the book Smart Business? It's been around a little bit. Um, it's about Alibaba. Um, it, you know, it's, I'm sort of jealous because they started out with a, with a platform approach from the get-go. And, um, and they're just a massive company. Um, you know, they're uh, half a trillion US dollars in gross sales. Um, I think in 2017, they have something called Singles Day. So it's an e-commerce, largest e-commerce retailer in the world. And they did something like 42 million calculations a minute. And when you look at like how many packages they deliver, it's insane. Um, but they have kind of two fundamental approaches, and I, and I kind of wrote this down because I wanted to make sure um, that I captured it um, kind of as, as they frame it. And this is a, I've read the book, and I'm reading it again. I really encourage you guys to read it. It will make you kind of rethink um, maybe how, how you uh, approach um, building out your product. Um, Network coordination. So it's a little bit what I talked about before, but they call it network coordination, which is if you have your platform in mindset in place, which means you have data that's available, it's democratized, and there is a, a framework and a rules of the road, and then you can unlock people on top to, to innovate. Um, but by breaking down the complicated business activity, and organizing within that framework, people can, I say get shit done, they said work more effectively. Um, 
And then secondly, and as important, it goes hand in hand, is data intelligence. So are you as a product leader thinking about what are the capabilities um, that will allow you to effectively iterate according to, and I love this, consumer activity and response. And again, it's, it's thinking not just about um, the in-person connections or field studies, but it's like in the product. Are you thinking about what is it you need, what are the signals that you need to see in order to understand the consumer activity and the response to it? Um, so yeah, I just encourage you, they're not paying me, but it's, I found it just a really good refresher actually. And it's pretty inspiring because they've, um, not only did they have their original e-commerce um, marketplace they created, but they, they realized it unlocked additional products that have created tremendous value. They figured out that for suppliers of products to be able to have enough product available on the shelf to meet the consumer demand for Singles Day in particular, they needed to loan them money. So they created a product in which they're loaning money to small businesses. Then they wanted to help consumers